Okay, uh, so the, uh, this is gonna be the second assignment. It's, uh, its main focus is to, uh, is to do some exploration of what the requirements might be. Right? Trying to understand what the core requirements of the core product are. And, the, and, and certainly we, we need to understand that uh, new requirements are gonna come in as we progress through the, throughout the uh, semester. And we're also gonna be changing requirements that used to, you know, as, as we understand better what we're building, we're gonna, we're gonna ask you to change something that perhaps is already built or you're, uh, you're, you're um, at least a, a third of the way having designed it or, or, or at, some, at, at some aspect of, uh, of completion, right? And, uh, and again, it's very, very common, right? That uh, as, um, as the business analysts and the uh, stakeholders they meet, over time, they realize that uh, some conditions have changed or they, they might want to add an additional column or they might want to add uh, some, some different way of sorting things out. Uh, so so that's, that's, that's very common. So we are, we are uh, still on the, um, on the requirements uh, discovery phase, the so requirements discovery phase. There's other the phases that we're going to be looking at next week, uh, which is the analysis and the modeling. Right, we'll look at, uh, well, how, do, how is it that you model? How do these convert, be, uh, how do these become actual web pages? How do they become actual uh, database tables? Or how do they become actual class, uh, Java classes and whatnot, right? So, so that, that's gonna be, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll do that. Uh, this one is, focuses mostly on the, on the um, discovery phase, right? Um, and uh, you're asked to complete two documents, well, I'm sorry, one document. It's called a system requirement specification. Uh, we're giving you a template. It's an empty template uh, that uh, you're, you're, you're gonna need to copy right, onto your own uh, uh, either Word, doc, Word document or Google Docs, right, and then create your own version of it and fill out several sections of that document. That will be one of the deliverables this week, right? systems requirement specification. You know, this is something that uh, you alongside with uh, business analysts and, and other folks in the, in the organization would meet over several weeks right, and, uh, and fill out this document. We're gonna try and do it in one week. Um, so so we just, we're only gonna you know, scratch the surface of what this document might look like. Right? We're only gonna focus on some really, really subset, minimal subset of what it is that we need to build. Right? So, so we're, we're not gonna try and tackle a, a, a real project, but nevertheless, it's, it'll, we'll try and make it as realistic as possible. Right? But obviously within the constraints of an ac academic uh, semester. Uh, so you can you can navigate there, and um, and this is the the, uh, the template. And and again, you'll be asked to fill out uh, different portions of this. Right, and we'll only have time to to uh, to fill out you know a, a subset of what this would be required. Um, you'll be you'll be given a um, a a, uh, a description of the project, called a project statement, and you're going to read through this. You're gonna read through this. Uh, a lot of the information here will be irrelevant as much uh, as a lot of these documents are. Um, a lot of it will be very, very useful and it'll be your responsibility to understand what is, what, what is relevant and what is not, right? Oftentimes the, uh, the clients, when they come to us for, they wanna build something, uh, uh, they really don't quite know exactly what they need, right? And, you know, they might be very, they might be expert at, uh, at their particular domain, at their particular business, but they're not, they're not, they don't know what the latest technologies are, what's possible, what they might think is it's trivial is actually very, very hard, and what they might think is very, very hard is actually very trivial, right? So they might be trying to avoid things that they think that it's hard, it's actually very easy for us to do certain things, right? But they might be asking something that is so completely not doable Right, that they thought in their mind, you know, they did it in a napkin and they, they looked like trivial, but it's actually NP complete. Uh, so, so it is our responsibility, you know, to make them, to make them uh, guide them through these choices. Right. Also, they'll, they'll, uh, because they might be very, very familiar with their particular domain, right, they, might, they might skip over things that is, is uh, obvious to them, but it's not obvious to us that we're not uh, as embedded in their particular business. Right. They might be... Uh, then I might, they might not, not even uh, describe the fact that there are users and there are accounts and folks have first names and last names and have uh, date of births. They won't even describe any of that. Okay? But us as so software developers, we know we need all those kinds of pieces of data. Right? So they'll, they'll, uh, they'll skip over things that is obvious right? and, and linger on tons of stuff that is irrelevant okay? to, to the particular thing that they're being asked to, that they're asking us uh, to build. Okay? 
they'll also be very vague and, and, and use a lot of uh, narrative that, uh, that doesn't specify uh, th things that are measurable. Right? They, are, they are very qualitative, right? but they're not quantitative. Right? So, but us as software developers, we need things to be quantitative, things that we can actually touch, things that we can be measured. Right? So, so we'll, you'll, you'll uh, read through the uh, project statement. And, and uh, there, there's a lot of uh, narrative uh, that uh, we want to make it flexible and we want to be, make it intuitive and uh, visually pleasing. And, but it's, there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing behind it to, uh, for us to be able to measure whether this is indeed easy or it's visually pleasing. Or th these are a, lot of these, a lot of these stuff that is, is uh, uh, described here is very subjective. Right? It's, it's not objectively measurable. Um, you know, maximize web uh, based technologies or improve uh, program delivery and services. So a lot of these things are, are, are very vague, right? And they might be business, you know, they might be relevant at the business level, but it might be irrelevant for us as what is it that we need to build, okay? So, so it's our responsibility to help the business decide what is it that uh, we are actually, what, what are we actually building, okay? Uh, as you read through this a little further, uh, some of this might be a little more specific, so that, like, for instance, we need, we need a, a way to administer things, administer a, a few things. We need to administer users. We need to administer uh, some of the, of the data that is, a, that is a particular to this particular domain. Uh, so certainly we, we need to uh, create certain tools, right? So here are some of the tools that we're going to be focusing on uh, throughout the, uh, throughout the uh, uh, we're going to be building throughout the course. Uh, so for instance, remember we, 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 uh, we mentioned a little bit last week, we're going to be building a, a um, an application where uh, folks can uh, market their um, their services, right? They can they can uh, clean a house for you. They can walk your dogs. Uh, I'm a plumber, and I can come in and fix your your heating. I'm an electrician. I can come in and and uh, and, and do work for you. Uh, a marketplace where uh, service providers can uh, can offer their services, uh, and uh, and uh, and folks clients can uh, can search for these uh, service providers in their local area, right, within their, their community, okay? Um, and, uh, and this is open to folks that are professionals, so professional plumbers, professional um, uh, electricians, but also just anybody who wants to provide a, any, any, you know, maybe, might be babysitters, maybe uh, uh, something that is much, much more informal, yes? So it's a marketplace. We're going to set up a marketplace. And, uh, and so there are certain things that obviously we, we need in the back end, and we need some certain things in the front end. Right, we need to be able to manage accounts. Uh, we need to be able to uh, manage what a service means. Right? Uh, we need to maybe put some of the services within a particular category, like cleaning right? and, uh, uh, or, or, uh, or utilities. You know, for instance, everything that, that is under uh, uh, you know, uh, electricians and plumbing, all that would go under perhaps utilities. Yeah, so we need to be able to create categories right? and, and organize those categories. Uh, we also need to be, be able to manage uh, the fact that as someone is searching for a service, uh, they might need to be ans answer a couple of questions, right? If, if, uh, if you're asking me to clean your house, I'll probably need to know, well, how big is it? You know, how many rooms? Do you have pets? Right? Do you, you know, what kind of clean do you need? Is it just, uh, is it just uh, the floors? Do you need windows? Do you need... So, so that particular service needs, needs for me to be able to answer certain questions, yes? Uh, and those, those questions probably will be different from one service to the next. Uh, if it's plumbing, uh, then I might need to be, uh, be able to ask, well, what kind of plumbing do you need? Is it, is it, is it just a kitchen? Um, you know, is it, do you also need uh, heating, uh, heating and plumbing? Or do you also uh, need uh, uh, in the bathroom? So different services will need different questions. Yes? So we'll need some kind of tool to be able to manage this. Somebody, some administrator in the back end, is going to have to be able to create services, yes? Uh, be able to create also all the questions that, that uh, a client would need to answer, right? And, uh, and be able to manage all this. So we need all these tools in the back end. So, so uh, this, um, this, uh, first, this first focus on what the project statement, uh, it, uh, it describes some of those needs that, of what does the administration personnel, what do they need as tools right, to work behind the scenes, yes? Right. Uh, also, it describes a little bit of the interaction between clients and the service providers. Right. They'll, they'll probably go to some landing page and have a, uh, an input field where they can type some, uh, some queries. 
Uh, or they might be able to navigate and just search through their, their, their different categories, right? I want, um, uh, I want utilities, or I want uh, uh, lawn and, um, you know, home and, home and lawn care, right? Uh, and then I can, I can look at the different services that are available until I, until I find a particular service, uh, and then I can then answer questions about that particular service so that I can then get a listing of different service providers for that particular uh, area code or, or that meet my, my search criteria. And says, hey, these are 10 folks that live within a 50 mile radius that meet your criteria. Yes? Uh, I could then perhaps navigate to each one of the folks' uh, web, web, um, web presence in, in the application and see customer reviews, uh, you know, certain, certain um, what, what other folks have said about this, you know, a star rating, uh, any, um, also any, uh, 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 we also have uh, uh, frequently asked questions that uh, all service providers must answer, right? For instance, uh, what was the, what was the, uh, what was the job that, that you, uh, it was, you were most fond of or something, right? Some, some generic questions that we might ask. That you know, through an interviewer, we, we might ask them to, to see if we, you'd like to work with them, right? So, so this this uh, this project statement describes uh, all this, okay? Uh, you know the and the different tools that we would need and in the uh, in the as uh, system administrators in the back end, some service providers, okay? So this describes the problem statement. Uh, for the assignment you're asked to read through the project statement. And as you read through the project statement, uh, you're gonna fill out the system requirements specification document, right? Well, not all of it, just certain, ju just certain portions, right? We'll come back to this document a little later uh, next week uh, when we talk about planning and risks and, 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 um, and how to schedule things and prioritization of what is it that we're gonna be building first and what's gonna be built later. Uh, so, so you'll be asked next week to answer a couple other sections of this same document, okay? Uh, also, as we progress, uh, you'll be asked to focus on other, other aspects of the, of, the, of the project, right? Uh, you know, this, this, uh, in this particular week, you're asked to focus on some of the administration tools that uh, are described in the project statement, okay? All right, let's see. Right, the first, the first portion asks you to just fill out some of the meta information about the project. Uh, you know, try to paraphrase, paraphrase some of, the, uh, some of the content that is in the project statement. Paraphrase it in your own words, okay, and, and come up with uh, things such as, uh, what is the problem statement, right? Try to paraphrase it yourself. Um, obviously, who prepared it? You prepared it. Uh, a project name. Uh, some of the document history and versioning. So, for instance, in the in the uh, as, uh, in the SRS document, you're asked to maintain a history of this document. This document is going to evolve over time, right? So, presumably, every week, you're going to come back to this document and make some little changes, and you're going to maintain this document going forward. Uh, first, starting on your own today, and then as a team going forward. Okay, uh, and so who changed it? Right. Who changed it? And when do they change it? Uh, also, um, uh, document history uh, versioning. Right. So, so as this changes over time, this is version 1 today, but next week it will go to 1.1, 1.2. Every time you come in here and you make a change, you should document who changed it, when, right? and just a very, you know, very much like Git. Imagine this, this, was, this was a Git <laughs> history of what, how this document has changed over time. Um, then you, you, okay, so that's, that's the first part, the meta information about this project, about the, uh, about, right, about this project. The next is, is identifying the actors. Actors are all the human and non-human uh, entities that are participating in this, pro in, this, uh, in this application. Who's going to be using this, this application, right? Who's your audience, right? Presumably there's gonna be some folks that, uh, that uh, are looking for uh, service providers, right? And folks who are uh, advertising as, as service providers, right? And somehow there's a marketplace where these two folks, these two human beings, right, are, are, can meet. It says, well, I, I offer these services 
and, and we would like to find folks that are searching for those, so, for those services. And our, our application will allow them to meet at some point right? and, and, uh, and, and make uh, the best of it. Uh, so this asks you to identify at least two human actors, which we already have identified, right? Uh, a, a client, a service client, and a service provider. Those are the two human actors. So this asks you to, in your own words, describe them, right? And then try to identify what are their goals? What are they trying to do? Well, as a service provider, I'm trying to sell my services, yes? Uh, and, but as a service client, I'm trying to find somebody who provides a particular service. So on your, in your own words, describe the, the two human actors. Uh, you also have a non-human actor, which is kind of like the website. The website is the non-human actor here uh, that, uh, that is keeping track of, um, of statistics and keeping track of folks, um, uh, who gets paid what, and, uh, and you know, provides a list of folks that meet a particular criteria. Uh, so, so the human actor is also participating here, yes? Uh, it's keeping, keeping track of billing, keeping track of a whole bunch of things. Uh, so this asks ask you to also identify the non-human actor uh, in here. Uh, then, then you're asked to um, provide use cases. Right, so use cases, uh, use cases are a formal representation of what the user requirements are. And user requirements are just features, features that a, an application must, must implement. Right? Uh, so, for instance, one of the features would be that it should allow me to search for folks that provide a particular service. So that's a feature. Right? Uh, it should allow me to engage in a particular service. It should allow me to advertise my services. Yes? It should allow me to review somebody's service. So these are all different features that, uh, um, that all need to become um, use cases. Use cases are a formal way of documenting all these features. Right, so, how, so for instance, uh, what, what a use case allows you to do is says, you know, who is who, you know, what is the goal? You know, who, and who is the person who has this goal? Right, if, I am a, if I am a service client, I might have the, the, the goal of finding folks who, who can fix a faucet for me, right? or who can come this weekend and clean my windows, uh, or who can come in and walk my dog, or whatever. Right? So my goal is that, I want to be able, so that's one of my goals. Right? I like to be able to find folks who can meet a particular service need that I need, that I have, yes? And uh, so, so that's a use case. And this, this, uh, in this assignment, uh, uh, we're, I mean, there, there could be hundreds of use cases. There could be hundreds of use cases. We're choosing three of the main use cases. Right? One of the use cases is a service client searches for a service provider. That looks like a core use case right, that the application should provide. Right? And so it's asking you to create a use case analysis for that particular use case. Right? Now, a use case uh, is documented in a very formal way. Right? It's documented by filling out the following for each use case. First, you need to formally identify it. Right? Give it a unique identifier. This is very important because all your source commits right, in, on, uh, on, on Git all right, are going to keep track of that use case. All right, one of the most important things in software engineering is that we want to trace, we want to make sure that all, all requirements are traceable. Right, I want to be able to say, hey, this was one of the requirements. Where is all the source code that implements that requirement? So we should be able to trace a requirement all the way down to every single line of code that was ever written right, to implement that particular uh, requirement. And there should never be any source code written that is not backed by a, a particular use case. Right? So, so that's one of the important, important things about software engineering. We want to be able to make sure that all requirements are traceable. We can trace everything that has been ever written for, particular, for any particular business. Right? So that's, that's one important thing, the identifier. And we offer, we suggest you use something like you know, user use case 001, 002. And this could quickly run into the hundreds of use cases. Right? Um, in a, in a, if, you're, if you're in waterfall, right, a lot of effort goes into, into documenting this. Right? And we never implement anything until all the use cases are fully documented. Right? We don't write a single line of code before everything is documented. If we're in Agile, this has, um, 
this uh, use cases would be written at a very high level. Okay, very, very high level. But then when we are actually choose to implement a particular feature, we will come in and actually spell out in much more detail what the use case is. We don't spend as much time worrying about uh, writing this in full detail. Yes? So it depends on what style you're using here, right? If you're waterfall, you don't write anything until uh, everything's fully documented. If you're in, in, in uh, if, if you're in um, agile, you have you have a very you know spelled out very very lightly, and then when whenever you pick out for implementation, then you you do the uh, the full analysis. Uh, then then you spell out the title. Although we're already giving you kind of a title, right? This should be a verb phrase. Uh, such as you know, a fan is following an actor, or a critic is reviewing a movie, but we already gave give you that kind of right. So we already gave you a title, so you can just reuse that title as a title of the use case. Uh, you also identify the actor. Who is who is the actor in these use cases? You know, who's trying to accomplish this? Right. Well, it's obvious, right? From the title, you can you can you can see that the that in this first one, it is a service client who's trying to accomplish this. Right. They have the goal of searching for a service provider. So the actor here is the service provider. Um, uh, also, description is uh, a, a paragraph or two, where a paragraph is at least three sentences. Uh, describe it in your own words. You know, paraphrase it. What is it that the user is trying to achieve? Okay, so you describe, kind of set the scene. Uh, that uh, you know, I, uh, my, my, um, I have a, uh, something, my, my my bathroom broke, and I need a plumber to come in and uh, and fix it. Right, so set the mood for what is it that they're that the actor is trying to accomplish. Uh, preconditions is a set of uh, trigger events that cause this use case to uh, to uh, uh, to to execute. You know, what what things need to be true before this use case can can uh, can uh, can execute? Right. I probably I need to have an account. Right. I, I probably have. Um, have to have identified certain services. Maybe I searched already, or, or I, I uh, so certain things that need to be true before this use case can can actually um, uh, be be uh, be relevant. Uh, then the basic path. This is kind of like the happy path description of how somebody would go about um, accomplishing this goal of finding a service provider. Right. This might be. Um, you know, I, I navigate to the landing page. I I type uh, plumber, and um, um, I get a, a I'm asked. I, I answer certain questions about whether this is kitchen or or uh, uh, you know I, I answer certain certain generic questions, uh, and then I'm giving a list of service providers that meet my criteria. Uh, I then uh, navigate to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to one of one of the uh, service providers, I I review some of their feedback, right, and then I choose I choose a particular service provider. Yes. Now these use cases need to be generic, right? So it's not specific to any particular service provider. It's not specific to any particular uh, particular problem that somebody is, is. It's a generic algorithm that somebody would implement, right? That uh, would would allow them to fulfill that particular uh, use case. Yes. Uh, so, so not here. So you would not provide that here. You would provide that either in a user story, right, or in a user scenario. So in a user scenario, you could you could specify as, uh, so, some um, some fictitious folks, you know, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, and 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 specify their demographics. You know, Alice is a, a you know twenty five year old uh, female, um, married or or not, or so has these these kids, whatnot, and then. And then specify all sorts of uh, issues that this particular person in this demographics, right, what they would be trying to achieve, right, and then and then do the same thing with Charlie. Uh, this is a you know a 52-year-old uh, divorcee uh, and whatnot, and specify some scenarios for that particular person in that particular demographics, and specify some of the use cases for that particular person. Yeah, but not here, right? This is in, in a use case. This would be generic. Okay, so this would this would apply for any service provider, right, or any service that I would be looking for. All right, so and this is the happy path. This is if in a, in a this is a um, based on um, on the base case scenario. If nothing goes wrong, 
Right? If nothing goes wrong, this is the happy path. How would it happen? Uh, below that, then you have variations, right? Uh, this, this is uh, uh, handling all the different exceptions. You know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe no one is available within a uh, 25 ma mile radius, okay? Uh, or or uh, nobody's gonna is gonna clean your 10 bedroom uh, your mansion, uh, or or whatever. Nobody or, or you don't have folks that uh, deal with pets, okay? Uh, so so how do you handle all these all these uh, scenarios, right? How would the system react? Uh, asking different other things on, on how is it handled, or you ask for something, some product that is no longer available, right? Uh, so variations, all the exceptions, error handling, and things that might go wrong. Uh, that uh, and in the basic path, you 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 will have you know one, two, three, four, like a pseudocode. You know this pseudocode, and then the variations you refer to the pseudocode on step number three, right? If so and so happens, then three A, three B, three C. Make sense? Okay. Uh, and then the post conditions is well, how is the state of the application after this executes successfully or not? Okay. Uh, one of the, one of the post conditions might be that we set up a, a contract, right? That you're going to come to my house, right? For 25 bucks an hour, uh, you're going to be cleaning my windows, right? So 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 a a, a contract is set up, a, an agreement is set up, and it, and it's scheduled for uh, for for delivery, right? Uh, then uh, there, there's a couple other sections in there that we're not going to uh, bother just yet. Uh, use case are are available here, I think page five, use cases. There we are. So the, the template gives you a generic template of what the use case looks like. Here's the identify, the actors, um, the, uh, the description, uh, the precondition, the basic path, the variations. So you're going to be filling out three of these, okay, three of these. Uh, and uh, and the, the use cases that we're asking you to do is one of them is specific to an end user, you know, somebody who is looking at using your application from the outside, right, using your application. Whereas two of them are are um, are uh, are facing inwards, right? This is this is for administrators. Person. So the, oh yeah. So that's another actor, right? We have uh, we have service providers. We have service clients. We also have administrators. Administrators also are going to be using your, the application. Yes? Right, so uh, so two, two of the use cases are for, for administrator personnel right, that uh, need to update user profile. Uh, they need to uh, add uh, search criteria questions to a, a, a type of service. So th this is the part where you need to, that handles the, uh, the different questions that you have to ask uh, for different uh, services. Right, so if, again, if it's, if it's uh, cleaning, uh, some of the questions might be, you know, how big is your house? You know, do you have pets? Do you have this and that? Right? So all those questions need to be handled. Right? Need to be, uh, so how would an administrator do that? Right? How would they do that? Uh, right, so use cases. Uh, then, uh, so, so use cases, also another couple of th other things about use cases. Use cases are typically very vague. Right? They're specific in the steps in the algorithm. But they're vague on implementation. Okay, uh, so for instance, in a use case, you would not specify whether this is a mobile application uh, or whether you click a button or you click a link uh, or or anything that had that would that would force the the, uh, the developer to implement it in any particular way. Meaning they have to be specific enough that I know what you want. Okay, but I could implement it one way or I could implement it another way. Yes. Right, so use cases should not make any references about any implementation specific um, aspect. Make sense? Right. Uh, from use cases, we need to now make the step a little further on something that actually I can build. Right. So that, that transition between the vague vagueness of how to implement and convert it into something that I can act, actually I can implement is called functional requirements. Functional requirements. So use cases is, is what the user's point of view of the application, what I want to accomplish, yes? But a, a functional requirement, functional requirements is what, an act, what a developer actually needs to implement that use case, right? So for instance, if I need to be able to um, uh, add, add a, um, a question to a, a service, 
uh, well, I first need to be able to select the service, yes? So for that, I probably need a list of all my services, right? And then be able to click on the service and then be able to add an, a, a question to that service, right? Or if I need to manage somebody's account, uh, I'm going to probably need to search, them, search for them by username, right? And then see a list or a table list of all, the, of all the users and then select a particular user for, for editing, yes? Right, so those choices on whether I'm going to use a table or I'm going to use a list or I'm going to use a button or hyperlink, right? So those, those, those types of, of details, okay, that's, those are functional, functional requirements. That, are, that have enough detail for me to actually go and build it. Okay? So here's a couple examples. Uh, function requirement specifies what the system should do. So, uh, so for instance, in the use case, a service client searches for service provider. That's a use case, right? I want to be able to do that. Um, uh, here's a couple of reasonable uh, 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 functional requirements. For instance, to be able to search, you know, search for a service, I'll probably need to be able to list all the service categories, right? I want to, you know, heat and plumbing and, uh, or lawn, care, care lawn and home and care lawn, right? Um, uh, uh, utilities, right? Uh, I need to be able maybe to list all the providers, right? If I click on, on, uh, on plumbing, I need to be able to see a list of all the plumbers, right? So those are functional. Okay, so, so, so this is, the, and, and, and so this would be maybe the title of the functional requirement and then going into the details that it's a table or a list or whatever, right? Uh, so yeah, so another way to think of functional requirements is to think of them as the developer's view into the application, right? So for instance, for instance, a use case might be generic and very vague and say that one of the steps in the, in the, in the, in the, in the basic steps of fulfilling a use case might say something like, select user from a set of users, yes? But it doesn't specify that I click a button or I click a hyperlink, it doesn't specify any of that. But a functional, a functional requirement might go into those details, right? So for instance, for, to convert the select user from a set of users, right, a functional requirement might say something like, you know, display users as an enumerated list of users. So that's much more specific, right? Display users as a table, right? Uh, with the following headings. So that's much more specific. You know, something I can go and build as a table. Or you know, provide a select button at the right of each row to allow selecting a user. Yes? So that's much more specific. Correct? Right? Something that, that a developer can say, oh, yeah, OK, I, I can build some of, some of that. Right? So those are functional requirements. Yes? Uh, then you, so you're asked to, for, for each of the three use cases that are listed above, uh, you're, you're asked to uh, create uh, functional requirements from each one of those, for each one of those uh, use cases. Uh, then there's non-functional non requirements. These are, these are requirements that uh, are, not, are not something that the user sees. They might not be even represented physically or graphically anywhere. But these are, these are uh, requirements that are um, about the quality of the application. It's, you, it's, it's easy to use. Right, that's kind of vague, right? Uh, or, or, uh, or um, um, it, it has to be secure, right? Meaning that you know it should allow me to log in, and that and folks are not going to hack into it, right? Or, uh, or it, it needs to be up and running for at least ninety-nine percent of the time during the day, right? Uh, or things like that, things that are quality of the application, but are not something that I, me, as a as, as a function as a user sees anywhere that it's secure or that it's, uh, it's uh, going to be up and running for, for a particular amount of time during, during the month. Yes? All right, so non-functional requirements are more describing the, 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 uh, the quality of the application. All right, so you're asked to, you know, front, front, you know, if you read through the, um, if you read through the, uh, through the uh, specification, you know, identify at least five non-functional requirements. Uh, all right, assumptions. As you read through this, uh, you'll, you'll see that uh, the, the, um, the requirements won't specify a lot of the things that, uh, that, that might be, that the, um, the client might have, might have considered to be obvious and they have not specified it. 
for instance, they probably didn't specify that uh, folks have an address, folks have a first name and last name, folks have an email. Yes, uh, they, they, might, they might even have a social, uh, social networking uh, handle, right? And so none of this is, is specified as a particular property of any user, okay? Uh, they might, if, if you're a service provider, you also probably have a pager. Uh, well, maybe not a pager. You have a, a fax, right? You, or you have a ways to, um, there are, or, or maybe you have a PayPal account, yes? Uh, to, to, to receive payments and things like that. So probably they, they don't even specify that in the, in this, in the, in the, in the requirements, yes? Uh, but you can, you can assume some of those things, some assumptions. Or some of the, uh, some of the uh, specification might be contradictory. Right, you read a couple sentences above, and it says something, and down down below it contradicts itself. So, wait, what is it? This or that? You know, it cannot be both true. Okay, uh, so so what uh, this section asks you to do is to identify anything that you think it's missing, or it's vague. Okay, uh, and uh, and make assumptions. You know, as good software engineering, right? It says, okay, I'm going to assume this particular interpretation. Okay. And to make an argument, I'm, going, I'm assuming this because X, Y, and Z. Make an argument. So don't just assume something because it's convenient to you, all right? Uh, not because it makes it easier, okay? If you think it's, uh, uh, it improves the, uh, the quality of the software to do something else, right, or to implement it in a particular way, assume that, okay? Um, also, uh, come up with a, with a, a, a couple questions that would, would um, uh, you know, if something is vague or contradictory, right, come up with a question that uh, would settle the issue. And say, is it this or that? Right? And then you know, make a question and say, you know, if, what kind of question would you ask the client to settle the, uh, the, a, a, a particular thing being vague or, 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 or contradictory? Make sense? And there's going to be, inevitably, there's going to be things that are vague or missing or, or not, not quite as, um, as crystal clear. All right. OK, so that's, that's, uh, that's, that's uh, the, uh, part of the requirements. Another, another part of the requirements that um, is also part of the discovery phase is, is that usually, usually what we're going to do in one week, um, uh, this might take months. Right, especially if it's if it's a large project and you have you know huge development um, budget and you have lots of lots of teams working together, and and probably you know, folks are meeting from all over the country and they are, are they're all being flown uh, to uh, to Boston and they're going to meet for three days in, in a uh, in a um, in a hotel at a conference and you're going to have everybody you know giving their own opinions, yes. Uh, and they're going to have, you know, you know, through a you know, very, very expensive meeting, right? <laughs> you know, taking folks out of their normal uh, working environments and, you know, just for these two, three, four days. Uh, very, very expensive. Flying everybody, feeding everybody. Uh, so part of these, these brainstorming sessions and whatnot, uh, folks are trying to understand what it is that they're building. And, and, uh, and, um, and, and usually part of, the f of this phase of discovery, if uh, folks are building, building some prototypes, on what it would actually look like, right? Uh, so they they might be either drawing it on the board, or they might be doing some paper uh, prototypes, and uh, you know, just to give folks some some idea of what what this would look like, right? If you click here, then you navigate over there, right? Uh, and, and so these prototypes could be as simple as drawn by hand, uh, or it could be uh, a little more sophisticated. It could be some PowerPoint slides that uh, are interactive that as you click, it navigates from one slide to the next. Uh, or it could be a, a, even more sophisticated, so maybe some Photoshop really, really looks really nice. Or some folks, depending on how uh, experienced the, uh, the development team is, they might put together some, some HTML pages, some static pages, right, uh, that uh, allow you to actually navigate and, 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 and interact with, with, a, with, a, with a skeleton uh, facade, right, and, and folks get a feeling of how, how this application would, would work. Right? And, and folks might say, well, what if we change the layout uh, or the navigation from this to that? And let's try this, let's try that. So these, are, these would be very inexpensive prototypes. They're throwaway prototypes. They're not meant for development. Okay? They're meant to be thrown away only to explore the requirements and test different ideas. Yes? So you're asked to implement a prototype. Right? A horizontal, it's called a horizontal prototype. 
uh, to, to implement the, uh, one of the use cases. Okay? Uh, the use case is uh, administration personnel adds a new search criteria question to a type of service. That's the, uh, that's the use case. The use case that we mentioned uh, above. Right? It's the same use case that, we, that you, would have, you would have written the, uh, the use case, right? all the, uh, the, the, the happy path use case. Right? And here you're asked to, well, you know, draw a couple of things on, the, on, the, on a board, take a snapshot maybe with your phone, right? and, uh, and include that as, as part of your, 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 uh, your uh, horizontal prototype. Okay? If you feel that uh, 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 adventurous enough to, to try and build this as an HTML, go ahead. But it's not necessary. If you, if you, draw, if you, if you just draw on the board and take a snapshot, that's good enough. Right? Usually paper prototypes are, are just as fine. There, there's no evidence that uh, uh, the quality of the prototype has any impact on the quality of the, of the, uh, of the project. So, okay, you're, you're asked to implement at least three web pages. You'll be able to list the, the, uh, the, um, uh, the services, the, 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 the service uh, categories, uh, be able to yeah, list, of, list of service types, then the list, the list of questions that are already there, and then a form that allows you to create a new question for that, for that criteria. Okay, all right, so that's, that's the requirements phase. That's the requirements phase, all right? So that's 90% of the, of, the, of the assignment is based on, on requirements. The last 10 points are asked, are, um, you're being asked to practice some source control. Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna create a branch, you're gonna create a couple of files, uh, you're going to commit them, you're going to create a pull request, right? you're going to send it to the TAs right, who are sitting here in the back, uh, and, um, and you know, who you have already included as collaborators in your project, and you're going to ask them to merge your, your, uh, your pull, pull request. Okay? And you're going to get into the habit of doing that. Right? Uh, never should you be in the position that you are committing your own code, or merging your own code. Right? You're committing into a branch, and you're asking some other folk in your team to review your code, right, and then merge that code into, into master. Okay? The TAs are going to be looking for this, right? Yes? Is it okay to have a model where you submit pull requests, have somebody else review it, and then merge your own code, or do you want the reviewer merging? Uh, have someone else merge it. Yes. Have someone else merge it. Uh, so basically, that person, when they merge, Right, they're taking responsibility for your source code. Right? They're saying, if there's something wrong with the source code, I am willing to fix it. Okay? And, and uh, so, so they're, they're, they have a, best in, a, a, a vested interest of making sure that this is, this is understandable, that I can actually go into this. So at the end of the project, there should never be the case where, oh, but somebody else worked on this, so I don't know, I don't know their, 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 their part of that code. You know, I only worked on this part. So you sh there should never be that, that um, you know, we should never be in that, in that position where, you know, uh, some folks don't know what somebody else has been working on or, or is not familiar, you know, at least with, the, with a, a, a um, large portion of somebody else's code. Yes? Right? As a team, uh, we own the source code as a team. We don't, we don't the, the source code doesn't belong to any one person. Okay? Uh, so yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a, a practicing uh, source control. The other, the other part is that, uh, as you remember I mentioned last week, every week we will be presenting a new, um, a new skill. Right, so last week we presented, um, uh, we, we, you know, we, we, got, we got the environment up and running, right? We, uh, we, we created a dummy uh, throwaway HTML, hello world. Uh, we exposed some data, some, some data um, and behaviors. So here we're, we're, uh, we're kind of building on that, and, uh, and, and, um, and I, I think we had already gotten started, uh, perhaps, maybe not, uh, of creating services. So we're going to introduce the, 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 the notion of web services um, as a skill uh, that uh, you, we should all be familiar with, be able to expose data and behaviors right, to other folks in a, in a network, right, so, that, so that anybody wants to be able to access data on the network, right, they can use this technique. We already did that a little bit last week, being able to expose just a string, just a simple string, yes? So we're gonna, we're gonna build on that a little bit further and, uh, and talk about web services, and in particular, we'll talk about RESTful, RESTful web services, okay? That uh, it's a more stricter uh, style 
of, um, of web service, the general, the general term of web services. OK? All right. Uh, here we give you some of uh, some the, the, the code that uh, you're going to be using uh, for the data model of the user in general and then user service exposing uh, some static content. Right now, it's, it's exposing some static uh, users. Uh, later on in the following week, we'll be, we'll be uh, uh, adding a database so that a database will be storing this data as opposed to being statically uh, implemented here. All right. All right, so the deliverables are the SRS document. Right, you're going to be filling it out multiple, several sections, section 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, and so on and so forth. Uh, plus, we, we're asking you for the Git branches that you, that you created. I think the Git branch, we're asking you for just one Git branch called user service. And we're asking you also for the pull request that you, that you submitted to your, to your TA. The, T, the TA is not going to do a code review. Right, they're going to assume that, that what you did is correct. Right, they're not going to try and, and, um, and, and, um, and look at the quality of your code. Okay, they're just going to, they're just going to merge it. Right, they're just going to merge it for you. Uh, it, ideally, you would have the, your teammates actually uh, provide you some feedback and say, well, why don't you do this, that, or the other. Okay? Right. All right. Any questions? No, this is individual. It's still individual. Still individual. Yes. Next week we'll give you we'll give an assignment that so, is uh, uh, so every student will have their personal ideas about the project. Yes, it'll be each one will have your your own interpretation. Yes. Oh, yep. Totally yep. Oh. yep. Next week we'll come back and, and now we'll have hopefully we'll have a team. Right? And then and then we, we will we'll have a at least we'll have everybody have read the project statement. Uh, everybody knows uh, something about the project, and then and then we can create uh, teams and, and start working together. Okay. All right.